flat serve, slice serve, kick serve. All three serves in one video. And I've deliberately chosen that sequence, flat, slice, and kick serve, because I believe you should start with the flat serve because as complex as the serve is, the flat serve is the easiest. For all three serves, we're gonna go over what the toss should look like, what the swing pass is, what the contact point is, and when you can or should use that type of serve and what the benefits and the drawbacks are of each of them. If you see newer players, less experienced players play, and they are trying to work with all three types of different serves, you will see three very distinctly different tosses. The more developed, the better the players are, they're going to be able to place those serves better and also to disguise them a lot more. So I'm going to show you some footage of Dominic team where I couldn't tell whether he's going to hit a slice or a flat serve. However, on the kick, you can still see it in slow motion. So when I'm talking about different tosses, I'm going to give you the acceptable range for each of the tosses. And then, of course, the more advanced you get, the more you can try to shrink that area. So, yeah, that you're not telegraphing it over to your opponent. We can always use a clock face as a reference point. So if I'm standing right here in the middle of the clock, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, for a flat serve, it is very acceptable to toss it 12, 30, 1. How far in front should I toss the ball? About a foot, foot and a half. I would not toss it much further than that. Leave that to Nick Kyrgios and Riley Opelka. So to get a flat serve, you will have to swing up to the ball, still leading with the edge of the racket. You always lead with the edge of the racket. However, there's a much straighter swing path from down at about six o'clock up to contact point. And you lead with the edge here as if you were to drive a nail into the ceiling. And as you're swinging up, you're turning your thumb up and out, you're pronating your forearm, you have an internal shoulder rotation so that you're coming flat on to the ball. There is very, very little rotation on the ball, if at all. You can literally, in super slow-mo, see the seams of the ball. What are the benefits of a flat surf? It is faster. The huge bombs that you see, whether it's Sabina Luzicki with 130 miles per hour, Karolina Pliskova, or Yelena Rybakina, or Kyrgios, or Opelka, whoever holds the serving record, Sam Groth, it is the flat surf. Because rotation on the ball, friction on the strings will slow the ball down. So if you want to jam somebody, if you want to jam somebody, if you want to take reaction time away from somebody, the flat serve is your go-to. Of course, you can hit your flat serve anywhere. However, because it has no rotation and it is rather flat and low compared to the other serves, it is a higher risk if you go out wide. And the other thing with the flat serve is it will only jump straight through the court. After the bounce, the ball does not veer to either side. So that's why a really good target, if you want to hit a flat serve, is either on the tee, right here on the deuce, or of course the tee on the ad side, going to your opponent's forehand. Problem is, if you're not hitting your spots, it could happen that it sits right in your opponent's strike zone on the ad side, which most people's forehand, and the ball can come back quicker than you actually release it. Of course, with a flat serve, you can also get into the body. That is when you really jam people. So taking time away, jamming people, great serve, the flat serve. The slice serve, 12.30 to 1.30. I would not go further out to the side because when you're having this side swipe 
you're not achieving two things that you need to achieve if you want to have a really good surf and that is an internal shoulder rotation and the pronation. You are still pronating when you're hitting a slice. Same toss location in terms of how far in front is true for the slice surf. One to one and a half feet. What you're doing is the exact beginning of the flat surf. Only that you're not quite pronating as much. Your racket face will be ever so slightly tilted, four to six degrees, so that as you're making contact, your racket face is very, very slightly tilted. As promised, some pro footage here of Dominic Team, and I'm gonna hit the key points in the service motion. So both serves, ideal release of the ball between eye level and top of the head. So completely identical here. Getting into the loading position. Ball toss, height is the same. Toss location, very, very, very close, very similar. So if in real life you're this dude over there, I don't think you'll see a difference. Now we're getting into the loading position. If we continue to let this roll, you're seeing that on both serves, he's getting into the cocking position here. You see how he's leading with the edge of the racket in both instances, swinging up to contact point. He's here still coming up with the edge of the racket and now shortly before contact, now we can potentially see this. So the left side will be a flat serve down the tee. And you see how from leading with the edge of the racket, he's pronating with his forearm to come at the ball from completely flatly behind. And it's going down the tee. And on the slice serve, the racket is ever so slightly tilted. But from this position to meeting the ball here, there are just very, very few degrees of a difference to the contact point here. And again, if this is real life, you will not be able to tell this. And you see the difference here in the result. And then we're going back to the finishing position here, completely identical on both. When can you, when should you, how, why should you use the slice surf? Use it as a second surf. That's a great option. And yes, go to the T. Absolutely, because it will cut into your opponents, if it's a right hander, into their body. You get that movement after the bounce towards your left. If we're looking from a returner's perspective, you'll get that ball out and away from them take a little bit of pace off and actually aim a little shorter because a really, really good serve, slice serve out wide, clears the singles line and the doubles alley before it passes the baseline because that really pulls your opponent not just wide to cut that angle off, they would have to move forward and to coordinate that is really difficult to do. The second benefit of that, of course, is if I'm somewhere out here in the fence, my back end is way open. And you see that as a pattern, the serve plus one. The slice is also a great serve down the T to stretch somebody wide on the forehand. And that is why it's a really great serve for doubles because it doesn't open any angles. What are the disadvantages of a slice? Well, a little slower, although I'm not necessarily thinking that's always a disadvantage because you also can throw your opponent off rhythm. But if you're not hitting your spots, so let's say, yes, you want to go wide, but instead of getting your target here, 
it ends up being here, it might sit right in somebody's strike zone. So when we talk about the kick serve, there's actually a little bit of a distinction that I'm using. The top spin serve, or I think the other day somebody called it the twister, which I'm thinking that's a fairly old way of saying it, but either way, that is when you're just imparting forward rotation. So what will happen is you have higher net clearance and the spin, the forward spin of the ball, sucks the ball down and then gives it a higher bounce but the bounce will still be straight. If we're talking about the kick serve, in addition to that higher bounce, you're also going to give that ball a spin that makes the ball bounce and then it veers off to your right. If you're returning as a right-hander, it's going to go high up on your backhand and that is one of the ways you want to use the kick serve. 12 o'clock to 11.30. A little too far in front. That is an acceptable toss. Your swing path will vary. In real life, real motion, real pace, it is very difficult to see as the returner at a certain level. And that is why returners at world class sometimes really guess because they cannot read the ball by the toss and or the movement. So if you keep your serve as close towards you, you're not going to telegraph it with a toss like that. On the kick serve, we're going back to our foot, foot and a half. The swing path, because of the toss, will start with the racket drop a little bit more to your left by your butt cheek and you will roll over the ball so that you're basically coming over the ball like this. So your racket drops lower to the left, you end up rolling over the ball, you are still leading with the edge of the racket, but your racket is set off to the side more. It's not coming up straight here, like on a slice or a flat serve, where you're then pronating according to which serve you're going to hit. You're going to have that racket off to your left a little bit more and you brush up to your right. And you do see a right side finish some. Especially if you're newer to the kick, you can, you can finish here. But at the end of the day, if you finish your motion, even Boris Becker or Pete Sampras, they will come all the way through. You just see that right elbow finishing a little higher instead of coming really tucked in close to your belly button. If we're now looking at the difference between a flat serve and a kick serve of Dominic teams, you will see a difference in the ball toss location. The preparation though, almost completely similar. You do see though that on the right side for the kick toss, the ball starts to have that arch over to the left. Height is similar and you'll now also see a difference in the swing path. In the cocking position, we see the ball is a little bit further over to the left here and he's coming almost straight up here on the flat serve, meaning that the racket face here is behind his spine and it's slightly offset here to the left. And whereas he's leading with the edge in both, you see on the kick serve at contact point, the racket face is slightly tilted this way so that he can achieve that rolling brushing motion here as opposed to coming flat from the ball. When do you use the kick? If I want to open the court on the ad side, if I'm playing a right-hander. If I'm playing a lefty, I'm going to use the slice serve. I'm not going to kick the ball high to their shoulder because yeah, the slice pulls them out a couple of extra inches. If I want to use a kick on the deuce court, I will serve 
towards the tee with that kick because that gets it up to somebody's backhand and hopefully above shoulder. That is also a great option when you're playing doubles. Because the ball is a little bit slower and has a slightly different bounce than just a flat serve, it allows you to come in closer if you're playing serve volley. And it is really difficult, especially as a one-hander, to not pull that ball to the net player, get an inside-out return up on the shoulder down to the income and serve volley. So now we're really at right up there. My favorite use of the kick was on the outside against a right-hander to get it out to their backhand and then have the forehand open. So if I pull them out wide, they have to do a lot of work to not get that ball anywhere to my forehand where I can just roll over and go into the open court. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite serve is, what spin, what location, and maybe I forgot a really good tactical option. Please also let me know. Other than that, feel free to subscribe, click that bell sign so you know when I'm putting out new content. You can also follow me on Instagram, and I will see you on one of those two channels very soon.